morning. My name is Lori. Angela and I are librarians at the Business Science and Technology Center at the Ming Library. We'll be your host for this program. Uh, we'll also uh, give a short presentation about working at library before interviewing our guest. We have enabled uh, closed captioning. Uh, please feel free to turn it on. Um, today's um, presentation will be recorded. A link to the recording and a copy of this slide deck will be sent to everyone later this afternoon. Um, Angela, can you, oh, you already started recording. That's great. Thank you so much, Angela. Okay. So in today's program, you will learn what it is like to work in a library and the essential duties of librarians and support staff. Our guests will share how they got to where they are today and the path they took. And with that, you, um, you can find out the different ways you might get your foot in the door in this field. You will hear situation we encounter in our work, the stresses and the joys. You also get practical tips on how one may move forward in their library profession. We will divide today's program into three parts. In the first part, I will give a brief overview of library work. You learn about the education and training requirements of two entry level positions in libraries, their essential duties, as well as career advancement opportunities. In the second part, our guests will share their experience and tips. And in the last part, uh, we'll take questions from you. Please feel free to put your questions in the chat throughout the program, and we will read them out loud at the uh, Q&A session. Uh, please note that we will not be covering how to apply for positions. We have prepared a handout about where you can find and apply for library jobs. One of our guests today, Richard Lee, has also created a separate handout with information about the profession, scholarships and grants opportunities, book titles you may find useful. We will attach uh, uh, both files in the chat here and also email them uh, to you guys later this afternoon. Now I'd like to introduce our guest, um, Annie Fo, Head of Instruction and Outreach at USF Gleason Library. Um, Annie has a bachelor's degree in art history from SF State and a master's degree in library science from Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis. She is a, uh, she's the co-editor for the book Pushing the Margins, as well as the Critical Race and Multiculturalism series. Welcome, Annie. Um, Chandra Tham has been working in public libraries for about nine years. She formerly worked for SFPL as a part-time page. Currently, she works full-time as a library aide at Oakland Public Library. She's also a uh, library school student at San Jose State University. She is a recipient of the ALSC Spectrum Scholarship, as well as a recipient of the Friends of the Oakland Public Library MLIS Scholarship two years in a row. Congratulations to you, Chandra, and welcome. Uh, and we have Brian Duran. Materials Manager at SFPL Ming Library. Brian has been working at libraries for 16 years. He has worked for both academic and public libraries. Brian has a bachelor's in English literature from SF State and a master's degree in library science from San Jose State University. Brian was selected to participate in the California Library Association Leadership Challenge 2020-2021. Uh, Welcome, Brian. Um, Brian has been sick and I'm really glad that um, he can make it uh, today. Um, Ruben Quares, Circulation Supervisor at Ocean View Branch of San Francisco Public Library. Ruben has worked on the paraprofessional side for the past 34 years. Ruben has been a library technician too for the past 12 years. Welcome Ruben. Last but not least, uh, Richard Lee, branch manager of North Beach Branch. Uh, Richard received his MLIS from San Jose State University. He started his library career at 16 as a youth worker. He has held many different positions in the system, including page, library assistant, teen librarian, and now branch manager. Richard has also worked as a reference librarian for several library systems in the Bay Area. He is a frequent speaker and presenter at professional conferences. Welcome, Richard. Uh, welcome, Richard. Now, um, before we begin our presentation, we 
like to know a little bit about you. I think it will be helpful for our guests to know our audience. Um, please uh, take, um, take a moment to answer the polling questions. Let me pull them up. Um, I Angel. lost the poll. Oh, you did. Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So A Angela, will you um, will you share the polling results when most of them have come in? Sure, I'm sharing the results right now. Okay, thank you. For some reason, I'm not seeing it. <laughs> uh, so we have uh, eighty five percent are not working at a library right now. Um, and of those 85%, 10% are working at a public library, 8% is working at an academic library, 3% is working at a special library, and 85% is not working at a library. 67% um, are interested in working in public libraries, 36% is interested in academic libraries, 23% is interested in working in a school library, 44% in special libraries, and 26 are not sure yet. 5% of our audience have a MLIS, 67% uh, is working towards one, 18% is considering, and 10% is not interested. 8% uh, of our participants have a AA or certificate, 13% is working towards one, 41% uh, is considering, and 38% is not interested. Okay, great. Thank, thank you so much, Angela. Um, so now we um, know a little bit about you. Uh, we will begin our short presentation on library work. Um, as uh, some of you um, may know, there are four types of libraries, public libraries like SFPL, Oakland Public, that serve the general public. There is academic library that serves colleges and university like USF Gleason Library where our guest Annie works. Um, there's school library, um, sometimes called school library media center. They are within K to 12 school that serve students, faculty and staff. Then um, there are special libraries. Um, there are many different types of special libraries. Here I'm just giving you a few examples. Um, there's corporate library that serves the staff at a corporation. There's law library that serves the needs of people engaged in legal research, uh, such as law students, lawyer, judges, and um, legislator. And there is medical library that serves uh, health professionals, students, patients, consumers, researchers. There is museum library. Um, there are libraries within museums. Some museum libraries' main purpose is to provide educational information to the general public. And there are some museum library uh, that are more hidden uh, from the public eye, and they serve as research library for um, museum staff um, and professional researchers. There's also a government library, and the most prominent example in uh, the most prominent example of government library is the Library of Congress, which serves as a research arm of Congress. And today we will focus on careers in public and academic libraries. Okay. Now I'd like to talk about the education and training requirements for librarians in general. Uh, a master degree in library science, it's required in most public, academic, and special libraries. Um, librarian who work in specialized setting may require additional education and training. For example, academic libraries may prefer subject specialists to have a degree in a certain field. Uh, a law librarian should uh, hold a JD degree. And for school librarians in California, a teaching credential and, um, and completion of a teacher librarian program are required. Um, I also wanted to point out that uh, for public libraries, uh, depending on the system, some position require experience working with children and youth or that you have completed coursework relating to children's and youth services. So if you're interested to work as a librarian in 
the public library setting, it's not a bad idea to take at least one course relating to you services, just to give yourself more options. Next, I want to talk about the uh, essential duties and responsibilities of, uh, of librarians in the public library. So most librarians spend part of their day working at the reference desk. Some libraries call it the information desk. Librarians assist patron in finding books or other library materials. Uh, we show patrons how to access different library resources, including articles and databases, ebooks, streaming videos. We also assist patron at conduct research for schoolwork, uh, business, um, or personal interest using reliable sources. We select library materials, uh, maintaining the collection, withdraw outdated materials. Uh, we plan and conduct library programs, class visits, and outreach. Children's librarians typically present story time. Uh, teen librarians plan activities for teens, which can include both educational and recreational events. Um, we also provide help on the computer, troubleshoot teleology problems for the public, including connecting to the library Wi-Fi, downloading ebook, printing, et cetera, et cetera. Um, from time to time, librarians need to handle patron issue, addressing disruptive behavior. Um, sometimes we have to remove problem patrons, um, call library security, um, and or the police for help. Um, once a while, we'll deal with medical emergencies. Um, some of us are trained to administer uh, Larkin. Believe it or not, yesterday at the reference desk, a mother asked me to help find her two-year-old um, son uh, in the library here. Uh, never a dull moment in the library. Other possible duties. Um, within a library system, there are many different departments. Librarians in the cataloging department's main duty is cataloging, classifying library materials. A librarian who works in a smaller library, a smaller library branch would typically assist with circulation desk duties, such as checking out books, issuing new library cards when it's short staff. Other possible duties include participating in committees and task forces, as well as developing community partnerships with local nonprofits or government agencies. Um, different library systems structured differently. Um, here, I just wanna show you the advancement opportunity uh, for a librarian in the SFPL system, uh, in case you're wondering if there's uh, room for growth. Librarian one is an entry level position. Uh, librarian, can, librarian one can be part-time, full-time or temporary as needed. Uh, many SFPL librarians joined the system as a temporary as needed librarian and later on promoted to a permanent position. Um, librarian one is a classification name and depending on your work location and responsibilities uh, assigned. Your working title can be children's librarian, teen librarian, adult services librarian, cataloger, uh, electronic resources librarian. Um, librarian two typically supervises librarian one. Librarian two can be a branch manager, program manager. Librarian three typically supervises librarian two. Again, depending on the division they work, librarian three can be uh, a district manager, floor manager, technical services manager, et cetera. Now I wanna switch focus and talk about academic librarian. Academic librarian works in a college or university library that serves students, faculty, and staff. Besides providing reference services, academic librarians have other duties. Some of them might teach a one unit uh, library and information research class. And in many colleges, this one unit class, it's a mandatory course that satisfy the graduation requirement for that college. Um, some librarians conduct information literacy instruction sections requested by professors to support their students. Um, these sections are usually uh, half an hour long, one hour long. Um, some academic uh, librarians specialize in acquiring, organizing, and uh, uh, preserving library materials. Um, others manage electronic resources, troubleshoot access issues. Academic libraries um, in, in general subscribe to a lot of databases. So managing electronic resources is a big task. 
Um, academic librarians also participate in committees and other decision-making groups that benefit the overall college community. Okay, so many academic libraries hire adjunct librarians to perform reference services and information literacy instruction. They are similar to on-call librarians um, or temporary as needed librarians. Adjunct librarians are non-tenure track uh, faculty members. They are hired on a contractual basis, usually um, in part-time positions. Agent librarians also take part in projects um, such as creating research guides, um, on, uh, creating online um, video tutorials, collection development, et cetera, et cetera. In a smaller uh, academic library, all librarians may work under the supervision of the um, library director. In others, the senior reference librarian might manage a group of adjunct librarians. Um, about salary, academic librarian salary schedule is usually based on education and credited experience. Now I wanna switch gears uh, to a library support position. Um, I wanna focus on the library page position also known as library eight. Uh, many librarians started out as a library page in their career. Um, library page is an entry level paraprofessional position. For SFPL, the minimum requirements a high school diploma uh, or equivalent, or six months of clerical or customer service experience. Some prior experience in uh, the library, including volunteer work, it's helpful but not required. Uh, there are plenty of opportunity in this role for on-the-job training as the employee gains knowledge in the library operations, collections, and policies. The typical duties and responsibilities of a library page include sorting and shelving library books and other materials, providing customer service at the circulation desk or page desk, performing a broad range of tasks such as checking in, checking out library materials, processing library cards, answering questions related to library accounts, giving direction, repairing damaged books, assisting patrons with using the self-checkout machine, copiers or printers. Um, other duties um, include assisting librarians with special projects such as display, uh, program setup, et cetera, et cetera. Again, different library systems structure differently. Here, I just want to show you the advancement opportunities for a library page position in the San Francisco Public Library System. Typically, one would promote from library page to library assistant, and then from library assistant to library technical assistant one, then from library technical assistant one to uh, technical assistant two. Um, however, education can generally be submit uh, can uh, can can generally be substituted for uh, required experience. For example, for the library assistant position um, at SFPL, the minimum requirement is one year of experience performing tasks equivalent to library page or nine semester units of coursework in library studies. So technically someone with nine units of library studies, it's qualified to apply for the library assistant position uh, without having to work as a page for one year. Um, so City College of San Francisco offers an associate degree in library information teleology. They also offer an 18 unit certificate program uh, for those who already uh, hold a college degree. Many uh, library staff I know completed this certificate program or in um, the process of completing it. Uh, besides CCSF, another college in the Bay Area that offer a similar program is uh, Diablo Valley College. In the next part, um, our guests are going to share their stories and tips with us, um, how their typical workday looks like, how they got to where they are today, and what they like or dislike about um, their job, et cetera, et cetera. Um, again, our guests today are Annie from USF Gleason Library, Chandra from Oakland Public, uh, Brian, Richard, and uh, Ruben from SFPL. So the first question we have is, what made you go into the library profession? Um, 
how did you get to where you are today? Annie, would you like to share first? Um, sure. So I think what inspired me to go into libraries was just having a lot of very fond memories of libraries um, growing up. So my parents are refugees. And once my mom learned that the library was this building with a lot of free stuff, we were there all the time. And uh, I think I learned early on that libraries were a place for discovery, for inquiry and to learn, and also just like get help with my homework, um, to have fun. And um, yeah, so I think later on as I was like in college and just thinking about what I wanted to do with my life, I saw a job ad for a librarian and I noticed that one of the qualifications was having a master's degree. And I'd never realized that you needed a master's degree to be a librarian. So I was kind of inspired by that and just also reflecting on, you know, having a job where I felt like I could help other people. For me, I was always really interested in research. And so I was interested in academic libraries as a potential place, you know, for a career. Um, so yeah, that kind of inspired me to then go to library school. Um, I went to library school at Indiana University. Um, so I went out of state for that. Um, that program is actually pretty traditional. It trains you to be like a very traditional reference librarian. And I think in terms of my career, that's really where I've ended up. Um, so in terms of where I am now, so now I am a fairly new department head. So I oversee um, a department that is in charge of our library instruction program and our outreach. So it's still connected to public services, but I guess my journey of getting there, I mean, I was a reference librarian first. And so, um, you know, that kind of got my start with just working with people primarily and teaching. And then I think as my career went on, I sort of found myself in more of a leadership position, but um, yeah. That's how I got here. That's great. Thank you for sharing, Annie. How about you, Chandra? Um, what made you go into the library profession? And what? Um, how did you get to where you are today? Uh, is Chandra here with us? I don't see her. Uh, <laughs> How about Brian? Uh, would you like to share uh, first? Yeah, absolutely. Um, hey, I'm Brian. Um, so how did I get into libraries? Um, you know, like Annie just mentioned, um, you know, I've always seen them as places of discovery. Um, I, I remember as a kid, you know, um, on the summer days being uh, dropped off at the library, um, you know, which we discourage parents to do in the Children's Center. But um, my parents dropping me and some friends off at the library and just seeing the programs. And, you know, I remember there was a guy that would bring in, you know, like reptiles and stuff like that. And it was just fun. And, you know, as somebody who, you know, um, really like struggled with, uh, you know, keeping my attention on things as, uh, as a kid, um, you know, I thought the library was just so perfect because there was just so many things to discover in there. Um, you know, I, you know, am still classified as a paraprofessional, um, in my role, um, you know, and how did I get here? Um, you know, I started as a page and a library aide, those entry level positions. And, you know, um, I just started doing that because it was a job that I enjoyed, um, because libraries were always, you know, really special to me. But as I kind of delved deeper um, into the profession and, you know, and I decided to actually go to school um, to get my library degree. Um, you know, my whole kind of thought about libraries being uh, places of discovery to being places where, you know, our communities depend on us and we're often the only resources that some folks have in our communities um, became really important to me. So. Um, you know, I think I'm here because I want to help and I want to make a difference. Thank you, Brian. I think Chandra is here. I see her in the participants list. 
Okay. I think she just, oh, hi, <laughs> thank you. I'm sorry, I'm still learning to work the issues. Oh, no worries. <laughs> My mic. No worries, thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me here today. Um, so yeah, I got into library school. Um, well, basically it started with me as a teen volunteer in high school. Um, I discovered the library for the first time and um, I thought the place was super awesome. I I learned how to uh, basically navigate uh, my way through a lot of things there. Um, I learned how to set my own email account and learn how to, you know, um, print things and learn how to look for books on my own. And it was just sort of like a safe place for me back in high school. And I basically um, helped my parents in that manner as well. Like when they need something, like some sort of information, I would go to the, to the library and print it out for them. And um, so yeah, that's how I got started in the library. And um, what really pushed me to uh, uh, go to library school was just, um, I was mentoring some Oakland youth. Um, I was in the, I was a mentor in the Cambodian youth program at Garfield Elementary. And the kids were like super excited when I brought some like books that, you know, had like Cambodian themes, like, you know, um, characters that look like them, books about Cambodia, books about just like storybooks, picture books, anything. And they were just like so thrilled to see that. And they were so like excited. And they asked me if I was a librarian and I told them I was a library aide, but they didn't really get what a library aide was. They just knew that I work at the library. And I looked back and reflect on my life um, you, when I was a kid, how I didn't really have a role model and um, didn't even know that a librarian profession was actually possible for me. And I think that what that was like the experience that really pushed me forward thinking about I want to let like my community know like yes you can do this you can become whatever you want to be so that was like sort of the driving force for me thank you chandra um how about you uh ruben um what made you go into the library profession and how did you get to where you are today um thank you for asking um i have I'm from a working class background with immigrant parents. The library was the haven of imagination. It was just a wondrous place as a boy. Um, my brothers and sisters, we would reside there and it was just a magical place. I have an interesting background in that I studied to be a Roman Catholic priest. And when I left to the seminary at 14, you had three choices when you were there to work. You either worked in the auto shop carpentry or the library. And this was an easy choice for me. The library was a magical place there. And that's where I started working as you would say now as a page. Um, how did I get to where I am today? Just application. After I realized the priesthood wasn't my calling, I saw that there was an opportunity to work at the public library in San Francisco. I'm a San Franciscan native. And so I started as the paraprofessional track as a page and just worked myself up to my current position. I think one of the questions on the chat was, can you move forward absolutely in this job track? Um, and along the way, different, um, uh, how do I wanna say it? Supervisors, they said, hey, had you ever considered doing this? And I said, no, I hadn't. So, um, that's how I got to where I am today by application and by good fortune, by people sharing ideas, which I'm sharing with everybody on the line, like all the other participants here, um, to something potentially jar your imagination to moving forward. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Ruben. Uh, how about Richard? Uh, could you share with us how you, um, how you started? Um, what made you... Um, uh, how did you get to where you are today? So like, I, I guess a couple of your guest speakers, very similar uh, background situations. Um, I came from an immigrant family. So, um, you know, my parents always believed that, you know, college is not an option. So after high school, you're supposed to go to work and so on. Um, so um, I guess like during my junior year in high school, 
um, I went to a career workshop, whatever, you know, like those uh, job fair. And then uh, the library came and recruited a whole bunch of uh, teenagers to work as a, either volunteers or intern. So I signed up um, to work there and then I liked it. Uh, I went back a couple of summer and then, uh, so that's how I got started um, in working in a library. And then slowly I took on, uh, and then they invited me for a, a real, you know, like job, so-called a page positions. And I worked as a page for three years and then got promoted uh, to be a library assistant. And I worked as a library assistant while going to college for about maybe 15 years. So, and then until um, I guess later on did I decide to go to library, library school. Um, because I wanna, you know, like get in the profession. I find it really intriguing that if you know how to do searches, um, you can, you know, like do a lot of stuff. And then as a librarian, you have more options than, um, yeah. So that's how I got where I'm at. Um, I guess one thing is just, just to work hard and know what you're doing and eventually you'll move up the rank. Thank you so much, uh, Richard. Uh, let's move to the second question. Um, tell us what you do now um, and what does your typical workday look like? Um, Annie, would you like to start? What do you do as the head of instruction and outreach at USF? Sure, so as a department head, I supervise a team of librarians and library assistants um, to provide leadership around our library instruction program and our student engagement. Um, so outreach things and I guess, yeah, like our, our approaches to teaching. Um, so I also serve on the leadership team. So I attend like bi-weekly meetings where we also kind of discuss our policy, like library policies and that's become really important in this pandemic. Um, I make decisions around that. And then I also am in charge of hiring for librarians and library assistants for my department. Um, so a lot of that kind of administrative work. Um, and then in terms of like the more day-to-day -day things, when I'm not doing all of those more administrative things, I also am still an instruction librarian. So I do teach information literacy um, sessions for professors who have maybe an assignment um, right now we're doing those in person as well as online, um, like sort of like single workshops that might be around like things like citation management tools, um, as well as credit bearing information literacy courses. Um, I also work at the reference desk. We also have an online IM service answering email reference emails, and then also meeting one on one uh, with students and faculty. So those are a little bit more in depth. Um, and then working with collections, so purchasing materials for um, faculty and graduate students in my liaison areas. So at, I think a lot of academic libraries, um, public service librarians may be liaisons to different academic departments or uh, disciplines on campus. And so a part of those responsibilities is purchasing um, books or database subscriptions and things like that um, to support the teaching and learning in those areas. And then outreach, so lots of outreach. That can be things like tabling events, um, representing the library on campus. And then I think somebody asked in the chat about committee work. Um, that's also a part of my job too. So doing committee work with um, national professional organizations like the American Library Association, um, as well as doing committee work uh, within my library and at the university level. So there's really no typical work day. It really changes like every day, which is actually something that I really like. I am never bored. That's, that's wonderful, Annie. Um, thank you so much. Um, how about you, uh, Chandra? What do you do as a library page at Oakland Public? So um, uh, we, as a library aid, we help uh, keep uh, things functioning on a daily basis at the library. So like if there are any issues or concern, we would bring it up to our supervisor. Um, our immediate supervisor would be the library assistant or wh uh, whoever is the librarian in charge. We let them know any concerns that are happening in the library. So on a 
um, routinely, um, what I would do is in the morning, I would come in, I would uh, check in materials from the book drop or the book bins, and then I would help fulfill uh, items that were placed on hold by patrons in the morning before the doors open. And when the doors open, I usually am the first person that patrons see at the circulation desk. So I would help patrons with checking in, checking out materials, um, answering basic questions they may have. And if they have a uh, sort of like a reader advisory question or a comp more complicated question, I would guide them to the right person who can uh, help them with that. Um, usually I would refer people to the reference desk, that sort of thing. Um, and um, besides doing that, I help with shelving materials, um, um, putting things in alphanumeric order according to the Dewey Decimal System. I help with shelf reading, make sure that everything is shelved um, in the correct order. I help shift the collection if the collection needs to be shifted, if the shelf looks too tight. Um, I help with mending materials. If a book seems like it can use a little pick-me-up, like a new mylar or a reinforcement, I would actually help with that. Um, I also help um, library assistants with uh, processing new materials. Um, it could be labeling materials. It could be you know reinforcing it. It could be changing. Um, like this, like clearing the status or whatever, or fulfilling holds and such. And um, I also help with, you know, if um, oh, with the librarians with like program setup, like if they need help with uh, setting up chairs, setting up tables, um, if they need someone to help table at an event, I would be there to help. Or if they need someone to help put uh, some art kits together, I would be there to help as well. So that's sort of like part of my daily task. And if I completed those tasks in a day, I, I have the option of just you know, communicating with my supervisor. If there's any additional projects they need help with, I can help with that. So yeah, so that's basically how my day goes. <laughs> Very busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you, Chandra. Uh, Ryan, how about you? What do you do as a materials manager at SFPL Ming Library? Hey, so, um, you know, kind of in the broad sense, um, everything that has to do with the handling, um, shelving, and um, upkeep of our collection. Um, that includes scheduling. Um, I currently have a team of 20 um, assistants and pages. And, um, you know, I'm responsible for scheduling, um, ensuring our daily workflow is um, being done. So essentially delegating tasks. Um, we do have a service point um, where we do mostly directional and also retrieve items. Um, so making sure that that desk is running um, efficiently um, and also leading projects um, in assessing our collection and any needs such as shifts, um, special projects. And, um, and then also communicating that to my floor manager um, who's responsible um, for overseeing our entire floor. And also, you know, just um, making sure that folks have the resources that they need and also just have that support. Um, you know, kind of on a day-to-day -day basis, I try to, you know, just work on having more of a kind of collective voice, you know, again, working with such a big team. Um, it's challenging, so I, I think, you know, just really trying to take a lot of ideas and, you know, we all definitely have our, our ways of doing things, but also try to unify them um, as a collective team. So it's kind of like a day-to-day -day thing. Great. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, Ruben, uh, how about you? Uh, um, what do you do as a circulation supervisor? Um. Brian set it all up there because uh, it's a lot of the same things. I think um, I'll just add to it by, by sharing that um, we're a small branch in the Southwest District here in San Francisco, um, overseeing the circulation desk, which is where people come to check out their items, return their items. That's a central focus and supporting the staff in that um, important work. Uh, scheduling is huge. I think as far as in the branch division, updating the schedules for the staff that as well as the schedules for the system where people can see who's staffing where at our location so everybody knows uh, in terms of the branch system where people are at in case there's a 
if somebody calls in sick or something like that. Um, daily, I think the other daily focus is obviously customer service. We wanna make sure our patrons have the best quality of service. So our focus will always be around that. And where I play my role is I wanna ensure my staff are in positions where they have success. Um, it was mentioned earlier about how a page will do their shelving or their shelf reading, their sorting, their shifting. Um, overseeing that um, to making sure that happens, but helping out where staff may need assistance. Um, and always with the fundamental focus on customer service and making sure our patrons are well served. That's huge for our culture. Um, so that's a, a, a very important piece. I also think obviously assisting our librarians uh, in the work that they have need of help. So I think these are all elements in a given shift. Um, so yeah, that's, uh, I'll just stop there. Thank you so much, Ruben. Uh, Richard, what do you do as a branch manager? So as a branch manager of a uh, busy branch, um, I would say a lot of stuff. I mean, like everything goes on, you're responsible for it. Uh, so I guess my main duty is to oversee the operation of the branch or the library, um, supervising a team of uh, librarians and staff. Also um, to, um, like Ruben said, um, ensuring public service, uh, customer good customer service, and make sure people have access to the collections. Um, so that include like if if there's a complaint, you know people walk in and they they don't feel satisfied with the service, they come to you. Uh, then you have to handle your complaint, and then uh, if there's any radical emergency or any kind of emergency. Uh, my job is to resolve that and take care of that as uh, quickly as possible. And then just handle issue like the building, if it's not working, some part elevator not working, I have to deal with that. Um, so I also on the staff side, I hire, train, and evaluate people's, my staff performance. And then um, I order, maintain, you know, like order books or maintain a good collections. And I also do a lot of like community work projects, uh, doing a lot of outreach and partnerships, uh, going out to the community and promote the library at uh, street fair, you know, events, uh, community meetings and so forth, uh, because you're representing the library. Uh, on a typical days, I would, you know, come to work, uh, do a walk through the building to make sure that um, everything is, you know, good and looking or, or, or everything is working fine. And uh, so before we open the branch and then uh, I would assign tasks or delegate work to the staff and then make sure they do whatever they're supposed to do and answer a question, work at the uh, reference desk, uh, help out patron, ensuring that Everyone who come in is, you know, like uh, uh, they're welcome and then make sure uh, we provide an excellent service. And then, um, and then also the critical part is uh, connecting uh, the information or connecting the people to the resource, whatever they need. That's the most important piece of that, uh, of library service is when people come in, they expect a certain, you know, they have a certain question or they want certain information is our job to uh, connect them to the right sources. And then I guess afterward, and then we close the, the library or the branch. So that's the overall typical work. Thank you so much, Richard. Uh, let's move on to the next question. Um, what do you like about your job the most? And what do you not like about your job? Uh, Annie, would you like to start? I'm sure. Um, I think what I really like about my job is the things that I learned through helping other people. Um, again, I think it's such a great job if you're someone who doesn't like being bored because things change every day and you're kind of constantly problem solving or just thinking through different kinds of situations, especially when you do work with the public. 
Um, I really enjoy the teaching component of being a librarian. So really helping people, um, yeah, get connected to their information needs, whether that's for fun or for a class. Um, I love observing the sort of, I don't know, like those aha moments that um, patrons have when they have a question and you're actually able to really help them get to the thing that they're looking for. Um, and yeah, I do think that working in a library actually can be really, really fun. In terms of what I don't like about the job, it's not really about the job itself. It's probably more related to like systemic issues around staffing and resources. I think in order for all of those things to like help people have a fully staffed reference desk, um, have librarians to teach classes, all of those things require resources, a budget, and sometimes it just depends on the library, those resources are not always available. Um, and so I would say that that's the part that I think is more challenging, I think about libraries is that sometimes that funding component or being understaffed um, or under-resourced, uh, that just makes it harder. Um, but yeah, that's all I have to say about that. Thank you so much, Annie. Um, how about Chandra? What do you like um, and dislike about your job? I think that what I like most about my job is being able to help a patron and sort of like give them that aha moment or really solving an issue or it's like, you know, putting the puzzles together. Um, I remembered when I was first a library aide, um, I was at, I, I worked at Brookfield Library and um, every branch is quite different. Like, um, like some branches are more like very heavy reference question and other branches are more like, oh, more like um, focus on computer usage and all of that. So I, when I was at Brookfield uh, for a couple of days, uh, working there for a couple of days, um, there was like this job fair that was happening in the community and so many people were coming in needing help with their resumes. And I was just like this person who was just fresh out of college and got my first job out of college working in the library as a library aide. And um, at the time the library assistants were quite busy. They had their hands full with like circulation and doing other things. So because there was not much to shelve because people don't really check books out there. Um, I asked if it was okay for me to help patrons with their resume because it seems like so many people were coming up and asking, can you please help me how to, how to make an email account, how to use a flash drive how to write a resume. So I sat down with each and every one of them and taught them how to, to do all of those things. And it was just the most like um, best experience I've ever had because uh, they came back and they thanked me because they got the job. And I was just like, oh, it was just like this one small thing that I didn't think too, too much of it, but it actually made a difference for them. So I think that was like the best, uh, the best thing about my job is just like, you know, giving that person that sort of experience, like, you just think that, oh, you did something small. It won't make that big of an impact, but it actually does. Um, and I really can't say if there's anything that I don't like about my job. Um, so far, it's kind of like when things come my way, I just say, oh, you know, I'll, I'll figure it out, you know. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much, Chandra. Um, Brian, uh, how about you? What do you like or dislike about your job? Um, I think in a broad sense, what I really love about the profession um, is, you know, just really providing a vital service to our community, um, just really being there and, and, you know, really providing a free resource, um, which is rare, especially here in San Francisco. Um, I think on a personal level, what I really like is um, also my ability to advocate for um, both the community, but also for my team and my team members to um, just really, again, just provide resources and, and really do what I can to either mentor or just, you know, point in a direction um, and just see that success, um, which is so great. Um, I think what I, what I don't like, um, kind of, again, just going back to looking at library, the library as a profession is, you know, I, I'm sure if we talk to a lot of our friends and relatives, um, about what they think a library is, we'll get a lot of the similar 
responses, you know, like, oh, you like books, you can't talk in there, it's a quiet place. Um, and we also kind of picture, you know, what a librarian might look like, but, you know, I, I it's not that I don't like that, I, I kind of see that more as an opportunity um, for us to kind of push ourselves, um, you know, especially everyone in attendance today, um, if you're interested, you know, bring a little bit of yourself to the profession and you know really change those stereotypes about what it means to be a librarian or be in a library thank you brian uh i i can tell you know everybody you know from working here on the fourth floor of the main library working with brian uh he's a wonderful uh, wonderful um supervisor a really really wonderful supervisor okay next <laughs> uh ruben um yes. what's your thought on this uh what do you like and dislike about your job i love people so i really enjoy working with people um it is a social uh interactive um occupation I think working with the staff, working with your staff, um, as well as the patrons. I love engaging our patrons. I love the, the uh, aha moments like it was mentioned before. I love just the conversation. We're a small neighborhood branch and just the people that are part and parcel of your life. And I, I really enjoy that. Um, as like I was saying earlier, working with staff, it's a non-competitive environment. You know, you're self-motivated in a sense. If you wanna move on to the next track, to go from a page to an assistant, to a technician, to a technician too. It's really based on your desire and ability and capacity. Um, uh, so it's not, I, I saw the question earlier about the competitive dynamic. No, it's, it's really self-motivated, self-driven. Um, uh, yeah, so I, I love those aspects. The thing I don't like about the job is enforcing the code of conduct, which is a set of rules that the library has on behaviors that patrons have to adhere to. That can be draining, writing incident reports is difficult and challenging. That's probably the element that I don't like about the job. But I think, again, like I was saying earlier, um, uh, people, working with people, um, supporting your staff, helping our patrons, um, these are all wonderful things about this occupation. Thank you, Ruben. Um, how about Richard? What do you think? Oh, for me, what I like most about the uh, job is the uh, social interaction, like many on the panel. Um, you know, the story they tell you when they come in and, uh, you know, uh, how you help them. And, you know, over the year, you develop friendship with them, right? They come in every day and they talk to you and they share with you. And pretty soon you have a community, you know, like uh, where you work and then you see them every day. And then what's so, another thing what I like about it is the impact you make on those people. Even though it's a little thing, they come in with questions about, for example, how do you, how do they um, get online and fill a job, job applications or, you know, like uh, photo, uh, you know, uh, anything. I mean, like medical information, getting health care, or, you know, finding a place to live and that kind of stuff. So those are, even though to many people, I mean, those are just very simple questions, but to them, those are really critical needs. And I think as a librarian and a branch manager is our duty to help, you know, the people who come in just, there are things like that. So the positive impacts that a library makes on our community is just incredible. And those are the kind of things that I really enjoy doing um, and, and helping people. And another thing is that their learning experience, uh, learning out of opportunity for, um, you know, working with our patrons and people, because you know, when they come in, they share with you the story and you learn so much. You become, I guess, like you're basically, you're open up to the whole world. And um, that's what the, what's keep me going. Um, even though it sometimes can be tough, like Ruben said, you know, we have to enforce the rule. We have to follow, you know, uh, correct some of the, their behavior. But overall, and then as a managers, um, the opportunity is um, um, more or greater 
the reason is uh, you can set uh, you can set do many different things. Uh, uh, like for example, you can have uh, uh, different programs. You can hold different events at your library. You can invite guest speaker, or you can do Zooms uh, meeting or program like this. So uh, the possibility to explore different ideas. How do you uh, partner with different businesses? Uh, how do you uh, you know like hold big events to promote your library? So there's a lot more opportunity if you're at the maybe like a management level or something like that. So I really enjoy that aspect of that, the social interaction, the things that you can impact people's life, simple things, and it makes it really uh, different. And then what I dislike about or, or can be challenging at time, it's that it comes with a responsibility as a manager. So everything falls on you. Um, you make tough decisions every day. I mean, like, um, and then, and the success of the library or, or your staff, um, it really falls on you. So those can be a challenging part, um, but nevertheless, you have a network of uh, people, a colleague who can help you and guide you and we work together on that part. Um, Sometimes dealing with difficult people can be uh, challenging as well, because you never know who's gonna walk into the library and then uh, sometimes it could be, you know, like, yeah. So we had so many situations, uh, but it's just that part of the job. And sometimes if you um, treat people, you know, in a way that they should be treated or well respect, uh, then it's okay. I mean, like, it's just part of the day. And, and then th the last part about it um, is the admin work. Just, you know, there are a lot of paperwork as a manager everything you know like um yeah falls on you so whether it's like injuries or writing report just a lot of uh, yeah those are the kind of things that i it's, it's a bit of challenge because there's a lot of work and responsibility that falls on the manager role yeah thank you richard um last question um do you have any advice for someone interested in this field on how one may get their foot in the door or for someone already in this field on how they can advance in their career? Um, any, would you like to start? Sure. Um, and I think I wanna address one of the questions in the chat about you know bringing your whole self to work and if previous experience comes into play. And I think that's one of, part of my advice, which is, um, Yes, I do think that you can definitely bring your past skills, you know, even if it's customer service, you know, a lot of that, those skill sets are really relevant and important um, in terms of like just getting your foot in or trying to move up. I do think if you don't have really, if you're really like brand new, you know, information interviews, just contacting people who have positions that you're interested in and just seeing if they're willing to either answer questions via email or even um, have a phone call or a video call um, that can go a long way. Asking a lot of questions, being curious about the about the profession. Um, if you can get a part time job just to get a little bit of experience, I feel like that's how you end up working your way up. Um, if you're in library school and you're able to do um, internships, I think that's another way to again make those connections and just get more experience. Um, yeah. I feel like that's the advice that I have. Thank you, Annie. Uh, Chandra, do you have any advice for our audience? Uh, sure. So um, hiring has changed quite a bit since I was first a library aide. Um, so I, some of the advice I can give is probably if become a library goer or a library patron, so you can become familiar with the library system and how what are their policies. Um, you can even look up their website and see and, and get and check out their facts page. Uh, that would help. Um, if you don't have any volunteer experience, uh, customer service experience is applicable. Um, and if you really don't have any job experience, you can think of the um, Imagine the scenarios like what would you do in that sort of situation? 
uh, how would you respond? Uh, how would you communicate? That kind of stuff would help with interviews. Um, one of the things that I did uh, for to land a job as a library page in San Francisco was I, I checked out a couple of civil service exam books from SFPL. Um, I even borrowed the uh, library clerk um, test prep books. Um, although the, the exam will not have these questions exactly, but it sort of gives you a mindset of like what might be on the test, what might not be on the test. So it started just like a little, um, a little, a little bit of it, of uh, what it might be like. Um, so yeah, I learned how to navigate the library by being a library patron. So um, I think that would greatly help. Thank you so much, Andrea. Um, Brian, um, uh, what's your thought on this? Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I think Chandra um, brought up a good point about civil service exams. Um, you know, it's always good to do your homework, um, make sure you're reading the job descriptions, um, you know what, you know, the hiring committee or what's expected of you to kind of, you know, get your foot in the door. Um, I really like how Annie mentioned, you know, don't underestimate the, you know, uh, experience you already have. So if you've never worked at a library before, but you've worked at Baskin Robbins, I mean, that's like, you know, great, great customer service, use that. I mean, the majority of what we do in our institutions has to do with some level of customer service. Um, and I think, you know, nothing kind of can be said enough about just a passion and a drive to kind of, um, you know, know where you want to go and, um, you know, what's going to take you to get there. Um, be really smart about your goals. And, you know, if you have the capacity, um, you know, push yourself to be successful. Yeah. Thank you, Brian. Ruben. Um, do you have any advice for our audience? Yes, uh, thank you. I think the first step is just applying um, to fill out the application to apply. Do the work as far as whatever exam books that you might need in preparation for the test you have to take. But I think this is the biggest piece. The biggest piece here is checking your mindset. I think what Brian was saying about the passion or, or um, that drive is to push yourself to learn. If you get your foot in the door um, and you're at the, at the page position, um, learn everything about that uh, uh, position. Um, learn the craft of that, the shelving, the shifting, the shelf reading, the sorting, answering the telephone. Like uh, it was mentioned, drawing on your customer service experience, but the hunger. Biggest misconception about the library is it's passive is if you're sort of sitting there reading a book. No, 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 no. It's, it's labor, it's working. And then you go into the uh, technician position, then into um, a supervisor track. Or if you move into the librarian classification, it's about engaging people. Um, it's a people-related profession in that way. I think um, applying yourself is the critical piece, checking your mindset. We had a... I'll finish with this. We had a, a few years back, they asked what's the biggest quality that they're looking for in workers? Coachability. That is being able to take instruction and executing. So I think these are all qualities that um, will behoove you in your course of your career. So I'll stop there. Thank you. Thank you, Ruben. Uh, Richard, any advice for our audience? Yeah, so uh, as Ruben said, I mean, this is a people professions. You have to have the um, people skill and be able to engage people and um, communicate with people. Um, another thing is that you have to have an open mind, um, be flexible and compassionate to those two people who walk in to a library. And um, also as a librarian or a, uh, a supervisor, you get, you have to be able to find information quickly as possible. So picking up your uh, search skills and so forth. And then another thing about it is uh, keep up with the emerging technology. That's really critical because uh, people will come in and they'll ask you a question about that. Um, one tip or advice is that a lot of librarians um, or, or they tend to memorize stuff like the source. Um, I 
in my opinion, I think that um, you should use the tool. I mean, there are so many tools because it's very hard to memorize everything. So for me, I just use the tool to help me to find the information that I need. And, uh, you know, the last thing is admit you don't know. I mean, like, it's okay. It's okay to say, you know, to uh, someone who asked for information, I don't know, maybe we can find it together. Or I'll find it for you. Thank you so much, Richard. Um, now we will move on to the last part. Question uh, from all of you. Uh, Angela, do you have uh, questions from the audience in the chat? Yes, um, there's one question we had. Uh, what kind of communities do you all join? How do you think about and propose program ideas? Does anyone want to answer? Sorry, um, is it like work community, school community, uh, committees outside of school and work? All of the above? Probably all of the above. <laughs> Unless they're talking about the ALA committees, uh, oh. but they didn't elaborate on that. Okay, um, I'm, I'm part of uh, the Apollo organization, the Asian Pacific American um, Library Association. I was also part of their mentor mentee uh, program. So I was a mentee, which was a very like wonderful experience. Um, I got matched with a Cambodian librarian from LA. So it was a really great experience. Um, and work group wise, I was part of uh, one of the work groups that we were talking about uh, dealing with like the digital literacy and digital divide in our community. So um, I'm part of that work group as well. Thank you for that, Tantra. We there's another um, question, I guess, for any one of our guests. How has the library service differed from before the pandemic, during the pandemic, and right now in its transistory stage? I could take a stab at that one. That one. This is Brian. Um, you know, again, um, I, I do work on a paraprofessional level, um, so librarians, please step in and um, add to this. But I think the tr biggest thing is kind of looking at the program we're doing right now that's, you know, based on Zoom. It's, you know, our, you know, um, you know, our reliance on technology has, you know, really increased. Um, but in that, you know, the services we provide, you um, have also increased in the way that we're able to reach so many more people and, you know, um, both in our community and outside of our community. Um, in that way, it's it's also, you know, it's, it's highlighted some issues, you know, because we all have the benefit to be on Zoom right now, um, you know, and a lot of the communities we serve, um, you know, members of those communities don't have that luxury. So, um, you know, it, it's really been a big drive and push um, to be virtual and, you know, rely on technology, but also a drive and push to return to us as educators and, um, you know, and the just vital resources that we provide to our communities. Um, and, you know, yeah. Thank you for that, Brian. Um, this is a question for all the librarians. Um, how do you bring your backgrounds and experience into your service? As a, um, as a Filipina, former restaurant hostess and community organizer, how can I bring and apply the talents I've picked up in my librarianship? Um, I can go first. So like Chandra mentioned, I'm also a member of Apollo, which is the Asian Pacific American Librarian Association. I consider that one of my professional homes. I think when I was in library school, well, I went to library school in Indiana, so I would say it wasn't the most diverse program. And I think I didn't know that there were other people who looked like me <laughs> in the profession. You know, I just felt a little bit disconnected in that way. So I think that seeking out communities where you see yourself represented in libraries, like I feel like it definitely exists. And so I think that's one way that you can bring that into your work. Um, and then, I don't know, kind of like what others have said, like your 
past experience can, and your interests overall, you'll be really surprised how those things can come in handy. So like my bachelor's degree is in art, art history. And I um, ended up, you know, in my previous job before I came in my current position at USF, I ran a lot of public programming and events. And I also had to coordinate a lot of exhibits. And so having an arts background really helped me in my day-to-day -day job there. And I never expected to use my art background um, ever again. It was just like, a, well, I got this degree. Well, what am I going to do now? I guess I'll go work in libraries. Um, but yeah, it turns out it was really helpful. So yeah, I think in a lot of ways, you can be surprised at how your previous experiences or you know your interests or who you are, like you can really find spaces um, in this profession. Um, for me, uh, my interest um, is always in research. So I, the way how I tied up um, my, my own uh, background is just basically create a lot of uh, programming and uh, talks or even display at the library to feature uh, my community. And then because I know a lot of people and I grew up in the community and I know a lot of people and I usually invite um, book authors or um, musicians and, and to, to perform at the library. So in, in other words, uh, using my grad plan, create diverse programming and maybe orders uh, book materials to create around it to build a community. So there's so much. I mean, that's why it's so interesting every day. It's the ability to be able to um, make a difference or, or create something, um, yeah, for for your community. So I really encourage people who have this different skill set or to join the libraries and use those backgrounds as well. There's so much more. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Annie, for that. Um, I guess this is for anyone, uh, what do people think when you tell them you work in the library? I guess I'll go first. Um, I, I'm not a guest, but I am a librarian at the San Francisco Public Library. But when I first told my cousins that I was working in the library, the immediate response was, oh, you must read a lot of books. But that's not always the case. <laughs> Especially since I was working as a children's librarian, my cousins who have uh, younger kids will ask me for recommendations. But mind you, I just started <laughs> not that long ago. So I didn't have a wide breach of um, experience in terms of reading all those kids books because there are thousands of kids books to read. So her asking me on the spot for recommendations was pretty hard. But a lot of them actually don't realize that in order to be a librarian, you need a master's degree. So a lot of them get really surprised. They're like, oh, you need a master's degree? Why? It's kind of hard to uh, tell them why you need a master's degree to be a librarian. But yeah, I just get surprised, uh, surprise reactions from people when I tell them I work in the library. Does anyone else want to? Uh, that's all the questions I have um, from our participants. Does anyone ever, uh, have any questions? Feel free to put it in the chat. There's a question from Laura about um, school librarian. Does a school librarian need a master degree? For, for California, uh, you don't. In California, you have to have, well, well if you work in the public school, I think uh, what you need is a teaching credential and you need to complete the uh, teacher librarian uh, program. Um, not a master degree, but the teacher librarian program.
there's a question from David. It's uh, SAPL looking for library pages at this time. I'm not sure, but um, we are uh, going to send you um, a handout uh, with with links to um, uh, position uh, with links to uh, websites where you can find uh, uh, positions. And say, for example, if at this time SAPL is not uh, hiring uh, library pages, you can set up an alert. And as soon as you know um, the position um, becomes open, um, you will get an email, and and then you, you can apply. Uh, yeah. So to look at the handout, refer to the handout that we're gonna email you. Okay. And also, I just want to briefly say that um, as you you know attend this session and learn more about library you know work. Um, but what I want to point out is that there are you know like scholarships. Um, grants available uh, for you, and so that uh, it can help you to support your study. So um, there's a lot of you know like money out there. So just all you need to do is just find out and research, and to see if you're qualified. So I think on the um, the PDF uh, that I created has a uh, a link uh, to the ALA. Um, you can search uh, for scholarship uh, grants and so forth. So that will save you a lot of money uh, because certain schools are um, professional association give out grants. Uh, those are free money to you to go to school. Thank you for that, Richard. Someone had asked, um, is there anything you wished someone had told you when you were starting out in the libraries? I guess I can start <laughs> since I'm currently in library school. Um, I think that I, I took a long break from college because I graduated with my bachelor's in, in sociology, social service. And then um, I didn't pursue higher education right away um, because I was still like struggling with the thought of if I wanted to go into social work, counseling, or keep working for the library because at the time I started to uh, have great interest in working in the library and um, at some point I really thought that I wasn't going to pursue higher education until during the pandemic uh, when I really thought about how I wanted to serve my community and all of that and um, I think that at some point I didn't want to give up um, and I wish that at the time someone told me oh it's never too late that you can still do it because I felt like at the time I was at a stalemate like oh I might not do it I might not and I waited until the pandemic to actually decide that I actually wanted to go to grad school so at the time I felt like oh I might have needed to hear somebody at work or you know someone in my life that says oh just do it pursue it you know Thank you, Chandra. Uh, let's see, we have some questions here. I don't know if our guests uh, are able to answer. Uh, <laughs> does anyone know anything about the online MLIS degree at San Jose State? Is it considered a good program? I graduated from San Jose State a while back. <laughs> I cannot tell you uh, how is it now. Did any of you have any um, opinion about the San Jose State MLIS program? I'm currently a San Jose State University student. So I can tell you that uh, you have to manage your time well and prioritize because I, I work full time and I go to school part time. So no sort of like understand yourself, know your boundaries and your limits. Like what can you handle? What can you not handle? Um, I tried full time my first semester and it was it was brutal like I was struggling like I didn't get sleep and you know I had, had to work on site at the same time and it was very exhausting so I decided after my first two semesters to go part time instead and just like keep working full time so in between like whenever I have time I would try to do my homework oh, when, whenever at work like during my break during my lunch or whatever. Um, so it's really important to like manage your time well because everything is all online. Yeah, thank you, Chandra. Um, 
our pages provide the training when they first start out on the job? Ruin, would you like to address that question? Are pages provided training when they first start yes, out I'd on the job? Yes, I'd love to address that. Yes, they are provided training. Um, most definitely, um, when you get the position and you're in the probationary phase of your employment, um, you'll be trained. And you'll be, well, in the case of me as a trainer, I spend a lot of time just going over the basics, um, the essentials of the classification, and the training is done. And across the board, uh, supervisors will go over. There is a sheet of the different job duties that uh, encompass the position. And um, yeah, so training is provided, and um, that's part of the process. Thank you, Ruben. You're what welcome. are, oh, Richard, would you like to add? I heard. No, no, no. Oh, no, it wasn't you. Okay. Uh, another question. Uh, what are some trends that you see forecasted for libraries and librarianship? Does any of us have any um, idea on, on this question? Um, I can answer. I think something that Brian mentioned earlier about like post pandemic programming is maybe a trend or a focus more on like accessibility, as well as um, diversity, equity and inclusion and anti racism. So I think that the profession is turning a much more critical eye to the ways that we've always been doing things and really asking critical questions around whether that really includes everyone like the people in our communities so i feel like that's a i don't know i guess it feels weird to call it a trend but i definitely feel like it's a movement that i see happening in libraries thank you annie um for those of us who have graduated already with an mlis do you have any advice for current students are there anything you would have done differently in hindsight? I can answer this question. I graduated about three and a half years ago. So I'm a pretty recent graduate. Um, one thing I recommend is if you have the opportunity to do an internship in one of your electives, I highly, highly recommend it. It gives you one and a chance to kind of see what being a librarian is at different libraries. You can do academic libraries, you can do private libraries. There's some museums, I believe, and, and there's also public libraries for a wide range. You could be a children's librarian, you can be an adult librarian, you can be, yeah, I highly recommend doing internship for one. Uh, second is save all your work. I don't know if you guys know, but save all your classworks, every little thing, discussion posts, take a screenshot of it, save everything. It'll help you if you are doing your e-portfolio, if you choose to go that route at the San Jose State University. I, I kind of messed up on that. <laughs> so I highly recommend everyone to uh, save all your work, even like this discussion post that you might think, oh, I don't need this, save it because it might be your best uh, example for your e-portfolio. Thank you, Angela. Um... I think for me, um, I, I think uh, it took me a long time to decide to go to library school, but I think I should have gone a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. But I guess afterward, it opens up a lot of opportunity. Um, when I was uh, a, a library, as a library um, assistant or a page, uh, it's very limited on how much you can do. Uh, so as a manager or as a librarian, uh, you can do a lot more, meaning like you can try different things and uh, work with different people and so forth, uh, ordering books, buying books, stuff like that. You know? So you can do a lot more. I agree. Thank you, Richard. Um, are those of you who are studying for MLS degree online able to squeeze in full-time jobs at the same time? How much time does the degree require? Um, when I, uh, when I uh, start my uh, school, I was working full time. So it was part uh, online learning and uh, also in person. So 
you know, it, it's hard, it's tough because I would get off work at six o'clock and I would drive, uh, you know, to San Jose State and then I'd come home around 11 o'clock, uh, you know, like two, two classes, uh, night classes. Uh, and that went on for three and a half years. So it's hard. Um, it's just like uh, Andrew was saying, just, uh, you know, organize your schedule, keep everything. Uh, yeah. And I know it's hard. It's hard going to school full time, doing, you know, yeah, going to school full time and then you're working full time. But it'll, it'll pay off. So I, I was working full time when I went to library school, but I, I was studying part time. I, I only took two classes per semester. Um, I, I think it's <laughs> I think it's impossible that you work full time and study. I mean, it, it's impossible that you work full time and study full time. Uh, you have to do part time on, on one of those. Yeah, it, it's 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 uh, yeah, it's unmanageable. Uh, let's see, do we have other? Oh, yes, we have a question from Sarah. What is your favorite part about being a librarian? Oh, I guess the interaction again uh, with people, people you come in, they come into the library and they they ask for information, whatever, and they tell you their stories. And then, yeah, it, it's just listening to your story and knowing that um, you make a difference in their life, whatever that you provide it could be a book or it could be just connecting them to information or anything. Yeah. Thank you, Richard. Um, let's see, I don't see another question in the chat. Um, oh, I got a question. Um, from Jessica, uh, can someone talk about cataloging? Um, I don't know any of our guests have experience working in the cataloging department. Um, probably not, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jessica. Let's see, oh, question from Christy. Can you join a library association even if um, you don't have a library job yet? I don't know, but I, I think you can join. But you can check the website for, yeah, I don't think, I don't think. I think yeah, I think you can join as a student. I, I remember, you know, when I was in library school, uh, uh, the fee to join ALA as a student, it's low. I'm pretty sure, yeah, you can join as a student. You don't have to have a job in a library yet. Let's see. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Chat is jumping. Um, I'm trying to see if I, we miss any questions. Uh, did I miss any questions? Oh, I, I think that's it. I, I don't see any other questions in the chat. Um, oh, uh, question, Pooja. I have done my master's in finance and doing library um, teleology certification. What position can I get in the library? So, so as I said in the uh, presentation um, in the beginning, uh, the entry level position um, uh, for uh, staff without a MLIS degree is page position. Um, but since uh, you are doing a library teleology certification, I think if you have completed nine units of library studies, you can apply for the library assistant position, at least for SFPL. I, I don't know about other library system. Um, so yeah, if you have done nine units of uh, library teleology classes, then you can apply for library assistant. You're qualified to apply, uh, but you can also apply for the page position. Um, don't see other questions in the chat. Uh, with that, I'd like to take this time to thank our guests, Annie, Chandra, Brian, Ruben, and Richard. We really appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule to share uh, with us your experience. Thank you for all the advice, encouragement, and tips for our audience. 
Um, I also want to thank everyone for joining the program. I hope you find the program informative, helpful to you. We will send out an evaluation survey together with the slide deck, the handouts, um, and a link to the recording later this afternoon. Please give us your feedback. Um, if you have further questions, please feel free to email us at bizsci.sfpl.org. That is uh, B-U-S-S-C-I-T-E-C-H at sfpl.org. Um, thank you again and have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye now. Thank you. Thank you.